This film is brought to you by New York Life and its over 10,000 agents and representatives who offer you quality financial products and services to help you get the most out of life. Program here. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Cleveland Stadium. I'm Bob Lamey. From rags to riches, from last to first, the Colts have made the playoffs for the first time in a decade. They return to the scene of one of their biggest triumphs, a 9-7 win over the Cleveland Browns in December. Can the Colts do it again? We'll know in a short three hours. You! Hi! After posting their best regular season record in 10 years, the Indianapolis Colts were now in the playoffs. Cinderella traded in her glass slippers for a turtleneck sweater. And on a frigid Cleveland Saturday, the AFC East champions were determined to leave the Browns out in the cold. The underdog Colts matched Cleveland touchdown for touchdown in the first half. But Indianapolis's sweetest season would soon leave the Colts with only a greater thirst for victory. Cleveland rallied in the fourth quarter, putting an untimely end to what had been a most exciting season. Robert Ursay's commitment to winning landed Indianapolis on the map of football powers and in the hearts of a captivated city. The Colts were dominating on offense. They were stifling on defense. Pro Bowl honors were bestowed upon six Indianapolis players in 1987, the year the Colts were off and running. What's he got up? 20 draw. Pick, get in there. We're on a 20 draw. Hurry up. Hurry. Whether running or passing, good things came in twos this season for the Indianapolis offense. The midseason acquisition of Eric Dickerson, the NFL's premier running back, served only to bring out the best in his backfield mate, Albert Bentley giving the Colts one of the toughest backfield tandems in the league. At receiver, Indianapolis featured sure-handed Matt Booza and the long ball capability of speedy Bill Brooks. Beach excelled as the Colts' starting tight end, and number 81 was blessed with two capable backups, Mark Boyer and Tim Sherwin, providing dependable targets for Colt quarterbacks. A set of gutty quarterbacks at that, Jack Trudeau and Gary Hogaboom acted as a pair of interchangeable aces, Trudeau filling in for Hogaboom during a frustrating string of injuries. Well, Gary's had a real tough season in and out, in and out, in and out with injuries. It's amazing how the man has recovered and recuperated to come back to lead this football team in many cases. A cast on Hogaboom's left hand couldn't keep him from leading the Colts to their first win of the season. In an October game against Buffalo, Hogaboom tossed five touchdowns, tying a team record as Indianapolis crushed the Bills 47-6. to A 
Another shining star in the game was Walter Murray, number 86, whose 161 receiving yards was a season high for Indianapolis. When a rib injury sidelined Hogaboom in week four, the Colt offense was left in the hands of second year backup Jack Trudeau. Trudeau may have lacked the experience of a starter, but his savvy more than compensated. Against the Patriots in week six, Trudeau notched his first NFL win and the three and three Colts were tied for first place. A week later, Indianapolis bought an insurance policy. I was at home standing in the kitchen, in the kitchen, um, eating ice cream sandwich, getting ready to go to a costume party. By that time, Coach Mike called, and he said, Eric, would you like to play for the Colts? I said, sure, Coach. Uh, I was very happy. Only at the last 11th hour did Eric have, did it appear that we had a shot there, and he was the only player in the league that we would have made this trade for. I was shocked because I had... Uh heard uh, talk about it and everything, but I really didn't think it would come true. Didn't believe it at first. A lot of things happen in this game that are, are not believable, and at first I didn't believe it. And uh, once I found out it was true, it's, it's, it's amazing that it happened, and it's a great, great thing for our franchise and for our football team. One day after acquiring Eric Dickerson, the game's best runner, Coach Ron Meyer now had the pleasant task of figuring out a way to get him into the lineup against division rival New York. All right, we can run one play with him in there if it's other than anything other than a trap. If not, we go with Albert. Your time out, I know. Dick, if we're on the goal line about a second and one, two from the two, I'll go Charlie 40 or Charlie 50. You know that one, don't you? Dickerson looked more like Charlie Brown on his initial Colt scoring opportunity. Rest assured, it was only first game jitters. Okay, my fault, my fault, my fault. I shouldn't have put you in that situation. That's bad. You all right? Okay. The running back was more than all right. It didn't take long before Jet defenders were trampled by the Colts' newest thoroughbred. While Dickerson introduced himself to the New York defense, the Colts defense was busy making its own lasting impression. Indianapolis took the Jets' best hits. Is it a first down? Well, tell me, my heart's in my mouth. And then delivered the game-winning knockout blow. The ball to Bentley on the end around to Billy Brooks back to Trudeau. He's got Mojo wide open. He throws it deep down the right sideline. And touchdown! The Colts were winners, and owner Robert Ursay was all smiles. You don't have to take my heart out of me. <laughs> Yours. Mine yeah, was yeah. in my mouth the like, whole fourth quarter. You're on the ball. <laughs> we don't the ball. Ron Meyer, in his second year as coach, molded the young Colts into contenders, and championship hopes were soon spawned for Indianapolis. Great job, kicker. I thought you were going to have to win it there in the end for us now. Nice job, Ron. Good job. Nice job. Great call there, Timmy. And, uh, I'm serious, buddy. That's a great job. Great job. You deserve that. You worked hard all week. Hey, man, we'll celebrate on the plane. Hell of a football victory. The Colts were hot when they traveled to Miami in week nine, but the weather was hotter. The Dolphins burned Indianapolis for a quick 14 points in the game's opening quarter. Then, the Colts got their second win. The 
Indianapolis defense caused five Miami turnovers. And when opportunity knocked, the Colts kicked down the door. For the first time in seven years, Indianapolis beat the Dolphins in Miami, a victory Colt veterans won't soon forget. I've lost to them all those times, and to beat them down there in their new stadium, it made us all feel good, and we started feeling like we can go out and beat anybody. The beating started at the line of scrimmage. Indianapolis' offensive line was the best in the league, sending three players to the Pro Bowl. Four-time Pro Bowl pick Chris Hinton, number 75, has all the characteristics Coach Ron Meyer likes in alignment. Massive, quick, refer to him as the dancing bear because he can do so many things that you just don't think are humanly possible. In his fifth year, Hinton is equally capable of finesse pass blocking or power run blocking. And he's had no better role model than his line mate, Pro Bowl center Ray Donaldson. You have to give that the tackle today, Hunter. No. Some pressures, but no sacks, right? Let's keep it that way. Ray is a tremendous pass blocker and he has a quickness and ability to get on you and really get to linebackers, which very few centers can do. Another Pro Bowl lineman was guard Ron Salt. The biggest challenge for this line, which included Kevin Call and Ben Utt, was learning how to properly escort newcomer Dickerson. We now know that we have to hold our blocks a little bit longer because with, with that guy, we never know which way he's going. You no know, play might be designed to go right, but. He may cut it all the way back left, so we're now taught to stay on our blocks. Eric Dickerson, when you think about adjectives, cool, smooth, silk. When you have to get the tough yards, uh, he's like a he's like a buffalo. He is hard to bring down. Indianapolis adored Eric Dickerson. You could read it on the fans' faces, see it in their eyes. But not to be overlooked was Albert Bentley, who emerged as much more than a pass-catching running back. One of the good things about him is his ability to, to um, make cuts when, when he's running and make a defensive player miss without even the guy touching him. Bentley enjoyed the finest season of his career, finishing second in the NFL in all-purpose yards. He also led the Colts with nine touchdowns, many the kind of gainers typically performed by gold medal divers. In a Week 11 contest against playoff-bound Houston, this new dynamic duo of Bentley and Dickerson flourished behind an offensive line determined to make life easy for them. Dickerson cut back, around, and through the Oilers for 136 yards, a club record fourth consecutive 100-yard game. And when King Eric wasn't in the end zone, Prince Albert was. Bentley turned the Hoosier Dome into his own personal Indianapolis Speedway. and the Colts overwhelmed Houston.
51 to 27. But the sideline joy was short-lived. Two weeks later, in a Week 13 clash with Buffalo, the Bills solved the mystery of how to stop the cold rushing attack, defeating Indianapolis 27 to 3. Now, in a three-way tie for first place, the Colts could ill afford another loss while still harboring hopes of making the playoffs. Drill that guy. Motivation 101 by Coach Ron Meyer. The key player involvement. There you go. I guess I believe in the hands-on approach. I like to actively be involved with the players. If that is motivating, then so be it. That was a fine field goal and a fine kickoff right there. All right. That's where they hit it, baby. That's where they hit it. All right. Fine job, Jack. Fine job. We'll take that stuff. Just keep picking He's a motivator. Coach Meyer really motivates you. He's a talker. He's the type of coach that can get his players fired up. Okay, you're doing fine. Hey, last time I looked at the scoreboard, we're leaving. <laughs> Protecting those leads was the assignment of the Colts defense, the NFL's toughest to score on in 1987. Top interceptor Mike Pryor tied for the league lead in takeaways, while rookie defensive back Freddie Robinson, number 47, solidified the Colts secondary. Robinson joined veterans Willie Tullis, Eugene Daniel, John Holt, and Nesby Glasgow to form Indianapolis's last line of defense. Of course, trying to prevent the ball from making it that far downfield was the job of Pro Bowl linebacker Dwayne Bickett. When you talk about Dwayne Bickett, in my opinion, you have a tremendous dichotomy. He's a killer underneath that exterior that looks kind of boyish. Hopefully he's the guy next door or marries my daughter. He is cold-blooded on that football field. Buddy, does he crank it up. Bickett led the Colts in both tackles and sacks. When Bickett joined forces with the men up front, number 78 John Hand, nose tackle Jerome Sally, and Donnell Thompson, and linebackers Johnny Cooks, Barry Krause, and Cliff Odom, it was often too much for any offense to handle. Number 99 and the rest of the defense terrorized opposing offenses. Their highlight, shutting down explosive Cleveland in a 9-7 Week 12 victory. Pro Bowl kicker Dean Biasucci's three field goals propelled the Colts to the upset win. With two regular season games remaining and the Colts needing to win both to make the playoffs, the Indianapolis defense took charge by eliminating the charge from San Diego. Five sacks of Charger quarterback Dan Fouts and flawless passing by Colt quarterback Jack Trudeau brought Indianapolis to within one game of its playoff dream. It would be at the sold-out Hoosier Dome against Tampa Bay, where the Colts would take care of any unfinished business. Thank <laughs> you.
The Indianapolis defense swarmed the Bucks and quarterback Vinny Testaverde. The Colts' offense then pounded home a win that rocked the Hoosier Dome. Anderson off the right side, turns the corner, cuts it up, field, touchdown! Trudeau on the delay, gives it to Dickerson, trying to get outside, cuts up to the 30, he's at the 25, 20, 50! The Colts win it 24-6 to and head to the playoffs for the first time in 10 years. And it is official. The Colts are AFC East champions from last place to first. The NFL's most improved team had met the challenge. The Colts were division champions. This victory belongs to Jim Irsay, who orchestrated that trade and, and hammered it through, and it belongs to his father. The division title carried the traditional shower celebration, but the competitive fire burns for 1988.